What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. First things first, for some reason today I've closed my bright, I've closed my blinds and my lighting is brighter than ever. So I'm very, very pasty white. Now as you guys watch the gameplay for today's video, we'll talk about it a little bit of course. But in general I want to talk about celebrations. Um, interestingly... Uh, yesterday's video and some stuff on Twitter has come about uh, to do with um, to do with celebrations, and uh, I want to get your guys' thoughts and feedback on it. So, some guy yesterday in the comment section said that I'm a fucking cunt, and that he is disgusted with people like me because I shush the man. Now, don't get me wrong. See, when somebody shushes you, it gets it gets frustrating. But for me, it doesn't anger me to the point where. It makes me angry. It angers me to the point where it makes me so desperate to beat this person that I probably end up playing better. So for me, when someone shushes me, there is no better feeling. There is no better feeling in FIFA than when someone shushes me and then I end up turning the game around and beating them. It's also, there's like, there's a good feeling when you're beating someone. Like, let's say you're 3-0 or 4-0 up and they score one and they run around shushing you because you're just like, dude, I'm winning. How, what, like, why are you shushing me? So, the shush celebration and the can you hear me celebration and for some reason the flappy wing celebration really pisses people off. But the one that frustra frustrates me the most is the running to the camera celebration. If somebody runs to the camera, you're just a dickhead in my opinion. Like, not an actual dickhead, obviously, you know, it's FIFA at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. But, um, I, I, like, that probably winds me up more than any other celebration in the game. You want to run around flapping your arms, no problem. You want to shush me, you want to can you hear me, you're just going to gear me up to play better. If you run to that camera, no, fuck you, fuck you. That's how I feel. That's how I personally feel. I'd like to get your guys' take on, on it uh, down below. And to the guy that is disgusted by me shushing someone, get a fucking grip. It's a game at the end of the day. You want to do everything you can to win. And if me shushing someone else angers you that much, I hope I face you one day and shush you because you'll probably launch your control across the room and it'll be an easy win for me. FIFA is one of those games that's a spiteful competitive game. And I mean that in the sense that like, people will do everything in their power to wind their opponent up to get those three points, to get those match coins, to score those goals with their players. And um, that causes more like bigger problems in game than uh, you can hear this guy talking by the way he, he was absolute joy to listen to throughout the whole game um uh opposed to the next guy by the way but yeah you, you you can like you can do things that just wind people up just for doing them you can like pass you can literally like kick off pass it around your defense a bit try and create a, a play and your opponent's sitting there mad as shit you you fucking sweaty prick you're passing around the back this that and the other yada 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 and they get mad so like there's a lot of things that make a lot of people very mad in fifa celebrations are just one aspect of that and i i don't i, I think everyone's entitled to play the game how they wish i think if you want to pass it around your defense and get play boring games and grind out draws or like one nil wins that's your prerogative you paid your money you could do what you want if you score a goal and you want to run around shushing someone that's your prerogative you paid for the game you bought your copy you are entitled to use everything within the game in a legal manner or like a within the terms of service manner to play your game and if that's you shushing people and watching every replay it's frustrating to play against but I don't get mad at you. I'm more, I'm more get mad at me for allowing it to happen. You know what I mean? But it, it would be guys interesting to see your your uh, replies to that in the comment section below. Now I was having a tough time in this city at tournament, and it clicked to me why. With this team, because I built a new squad for this, and I worked like I didn't just change out the players in my main squad. I completely forgot to do my um, my uh, like. Not custom tactics, but my player instructions. I, I just forgot to do them. And for me, they play a big, big part to how I play. So for those of you that ask a lot, this is what I do. I set both my fullbacks to stay back while attacking. I set, I think, I think on this one, I left my midfielders as they were because of the two midfielders with high, high work rates. But typically, if I don't have high, high work rate midfielders, I'll set my central center midfield. Oh no, I actually did do it. There you go. I set Marquisio to stay back while attacking. I set um, the two fullbacks to stay wide and get in behind. And that's what I change. Without that being changed, because I was losing games. Like that guy that beat me 4-1 there, it was a good player. It was an easy, even game. But something just didn't feel right. And I was like, what's wrong? Like, what's going wrong here? Why aren't I winning games 
like normal. Maybe I'm just coming up against, uh, you know, better people. Maybe I'm just not as good at FIFA as I want. Or maybe there's something else going on. So I changed. Uh, I changed my my uh, custom ta not custom tactics. What they call I changed my player instructions, and it instantly made a huge impact for me. Straight away, I could feel the team playing good. Like the way the the player instructions work, it just makes me feel like a better player. Whether or not it actually makes me a better player, whether or not it actually changes things to the point where it makes the team play completely different, I don't necessarily know. But it makes me feel like I'm playing better, and that's hugely important. Like your mental state in FIFA is so important. If you're in a game where you're comfortable and you're confident, even if you're against a better player than you, if you if you feel like you're the better player. You'll, you'll do things confidently, you'll make passes that are good, you'll, you'll take shots that are good choices. If you're playing a game where you feel under pressure and like you feel like your opponent's better than you, you start making needless mistakes, you start giving the ball away, you know, you, you start taking shots from long range out of frustration and, and you play different. So for me, this change was massive and into the first game, I ended up going and scoring a goal uh, hat-trick with Handanovic. 5-0 was the full-time score. And I could instantly feel everything go my way. It's, it's almost like the, the player instructions, although I only changed it for five players and so minimal changes, all I did was set the fullbacks to stay back while attacking, one central midfielder to stay back while attacking, and the two wingers to get wide and get in behind. That's all I did. And it made the biggest difference for me. So if you guys ever wanted to know what I did and why I did it, that's why I do it. That's what I did. The next player we came up against... Very, very frustrating kid. Um, he, he was coughing, as you can hear, the whole fucking game. Like, do you not realise... First of all, do you not realise your mic's on? And second of all, he didn't talk at all. Like, he didn't speak. He didn't, he didn't grunt. He didn't moan. He didn't groan. He didn't, like... He didn't curse at the ref. He just coughed. The whole fucking game, it was so... He didn't even celebrate when he scored. I went 1-0 up, he ended up pulling it back uh, to 1-1. One, one. He goes down the uh, kind of like right-hand side here. Really poor defending from me. Ball goes through to Niang, he shoots and scores. Not even like, yes or come on. Just... <coughs> so I ended up messaging him. And I was like, dude, turn your fucking mic off. I actually said it nicer than that. I didn't swear or anything. I was like, dude, turn your mic off. No one wants to hear you cough for 20 minutes. Fortunately, and for the sake of the video, he turned his mic off. Now, he actually messaged me after the game, messaging me back saying I play like a bitch, which I'm totally okay with because I won the game. Um, so I don't really mind, uh, you know, I don't really mind being called uh, playing like a bitch. Is my camera, is, you know, it's not focused on me. Focus. There we go. Um, I don't know how long that was out of focus either, guys. I apologize if that was out of focus for a while. But yeah, I ended up asking him to turn his mic off. He did turn his mic off. And then into the second half, uh, we went and pretty much straight from kickoff, actually, I scored the goal that put me into the lead. We go through here with Quadrado. Quadrado plays into Higuain. Higuain to Insigne. And you see where Quadrado is now running out? That's because I've got him to stay wide. If he was set to... Um, if he was set to just still default, he would have been in the box and... Whether or not that would have helped or hindered, I don't know because I don't. Obviously, you know the butterfly effect. You can't really see what would happen. But having players in their correct positions for me is important. And I shushed him there, by the way, guys. Not because I'm a dickhead, but because he kept coughing. So I was like, you know, shush. I want you to be quiet, kind of thing. But anyway, we end up winning the game two-one. Uh, you know, this silly out tournament has been a struggle for me. Like I think we've lost twice in the semis, once in the second round, once in the first round. And this is our fifth or maybe sixth attempt at trying to win the tournament. So, you know, it's taken me way longer than before of any of the other tournaments. And it's the one with the shortest day. So if I don't win it on this occasion, I don't have enough time to win it again. Because at the time of recording this video, it's 20 past 4 in the afternoon. By the time I've uh, edited, rendered and uploaded this video, the tournament will be finished. I won't have enough time to play it again. So it's imperative that we win it on this occasion. And whilst I was playing this last night, I knew it was important for me to win no matter what. Into the semi-final we go. We come up against 4-1-2-1-2 team. A uh, really nice team. Dybala, Mertens, um, the ham seat card there in a cam. He's got... I don't know why he doesn't play 4-1-2-1-2 wide because it would be better for him on chemistry. But if he likes to play those players there on midfield on 7 chem, who am I to argue? You know, I play so many players off chem. It's crazy. And this was a really tough game. Not by the way of chances because I created a lot of good chances. Um, and and we had a good game. It, you know, he was a strong opponent. But one one mistake from his goalkeeper defined the whole game. And the reason why I went and stood there with Nangolan is because several times 
he had done that. He'd passed it back to his goalkeeper and then passed it back out rather than clearing it. So I thought, you know, I basically tried to cover the obvious pass every time in the hopes that eventually he would make that mistake, and he did. And then not too, uh, not too long after that, I ended up getting straight back into uh, you know into his half literally he kicked off I stole the ball we go through there with Menez Menez into Quadrado Quadrado to Marquisio first shot gets saved and the second header there from Quadrado finds the back of the net and we go 2-0 up after 82 minutes and that is where he decided he had had enough and we end up getting a rage quit and find our way into the final so very 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 important game coming up now because a loss here will be devastating um, you know, having to do it all again, go through all the, the rigmarole of putting the fitness back on the players and, and, you know, playing a couple of games and going and playing another fitness game and then playing a couple more games and hoping that we get to the final again. I just didn't want to have to do that. Fortunately enough, every single time we've made it to the final so far, we've won. Um, so, you know, that was kind of going in our favour. We're using, again, the bronze uh, attribute cards that we've got from all those bronze packs. We're nearly run out of them now. You know, we're getting low. There's still a hell of a lot of goalkeeper ones. I really should just add one to the goalkeeper every game at the moment because we have so many. It, you know, it just doesn't really matter. And I tried to improve the players to make them more balanced than anything else. I wasn't trying to give them, like, just stupid pace or just stupid dribbling or anything like that. I wanted to make them more balanced so that I could have a good game and, and a game where I wasn't worried about Insigne's weakness or his shooting or, you know, Quadrado's passing, although I didn't add, I think, strength or passing to either of those two players. But you know, you understand where I'm coming from. And, um... Into the final, we came up against Irkia's HD. He also has attribute cards on all of his players that are all gold, I believe. Um, so they could be like full gold attribute cards. They could be individual gold attribute cards. But he had a silver goalkeeper, which was very interesting to me. And after just nine minutes here, his goalkeeper throws it out to Koulibaly down the right-hand side. Koulibaly here picks up the ball, plays it into midfield. Midfield, uh, Parolo plays it to Menez. I, I track back with Higuain, still the ball. Pereira here plays the ball out to Insigne. Insigne bursts into uh, into life, cuts it across the box, and Quadrado is there to tap home to make it 1-0. Now, my opponent, he uh, was actually a viewer. He messaged me after on Twitter saying good game, and it was a good game. And he's a very, very good player. Um, I, I'm very conf confident that he would have gone on to win this uh, tournament eventually for himself, uh, even though he lost to me here in the final. He may well have already won it and just not been using that uh, that blue player. But as I said about mistakes, he makes another mistake in midfield there. Like, gives a, gives up easy possession. I give it to Higuain. I smash it from range. We end up going to tune it up and winning. So we get ourselves the player and I was relieved. I Like, although I probably won't use this guy much, if at all, and although he doesn't really mean much to me because I can't sell him, not getting him would have been devastating because I want to show you guys that it doesn't matter what whether you put pennies or pounds or nothing into this game. You can, you can get everything from it. You know, we won all four so far. Today, the new player for League uh, League One will be Gonalons, and he's got a really good looking card. So I'm excited to try and play for him. As I listed up all these City R players, I ended up losing so much money on them. I didn't realize they came down so much. Very disappointed on that. But there you go, guys. We win ourselves Sansone. Apparently, according to a few of you guys, his card is actually really, really good. So you guys should give him a try, get, you know, test him out, see how he does for you. But this is going to be the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.